Uh, this is a question from Marie and she said, what is the difference between a service blueprint and a customer journey map? Um, and um, before we answer this one, uh, people who want to know more about this question, we answered this in our free customer journey mapping uh, essentials masterclass, one hour long mm. masterclass. Uh, I'll put the link for it uh, in the notes of this video, but let's answer it right now, Daniel. You have a really clear explanation. Yeah. Um, the customer journey map is a part of the service blueprint. So a service blueprint, the classical service blueprint, is where you have the customer journey on the top. You have the customer perspective on the top. And based on it, this, the starting point there is the customer's situations or activities going through a, uh, an offer or a service or experience. Under that, you have the touch points. What is visible from our organization? What are the, the the meeting points between our organization and the customer? So that's under it. And then if you go down even one more step, then you have, what are we doing internally? What are employees doing? What kind of processes do we have? What kind of support systems do we have? That's uh, the lowest part in the service blueprint. So the top the customer situation is actually the customer journey map and people used to put uh, touch points in the customer journey map as well so i would say that's kind of the customer journey map then when you add uh, what are we doing internally uh, what are behind the line of visibility mm -hmm. then we start to talk about how do we what are we doing as, a, as an organization to make all the things on, uh, that the customer can see? Then it's the service blueprint. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the, way, the way I like to see it is, what are we doing to actually deliver the service? Yes. And uh, anything that has to do with how, how you answer that question, that is part of a service blueprint, right? Yes. I think that uh, um, it sometimes the service blueprint, or usually I would say, I mean, it's that's where you really create value, because what? Why is it? Why should we know what the customer are doing if we don't have any means to make anything about it? And I think that many organizations started to, to make customer journey maps. They, yeah, the, the first mistake they do is that they just list a lot of touch points and that's super stupid. But even if they work from the customer's perspective and they have the touch points and they see problems, if it, they don't work with what happens behind it, what do we do about it? What are, why are they doing customer journey maps in the first place at all? I mean, why, why even bother about it? Why bother to understand the customer's perspective if you don't do anything about it? And that's uh, one of my tricks is to talk to a customer who wants to do a journey app is to ask them how much budget do you have to actually implement the ideas that come out of it? How much time and budget? Because yeah. you don't want to create a customer journey map. You want to improve a process. You want to mm. create a new mm. service. Mm. That's the conversation you should be having. But mm. maybe we're, we're sort of drifting off. But if somebody asks you for a journey map, say that's great, but you're going to do something with the map. And yeah, that's but I think that's a, I think that's very important, and I think it's it's good for the whole customer journey mapping community to be sure that the customer journey maps that we are doing in this overall global movement that you really create value of it. Otherwise, people will stop doing customer journey maps in a few years and think, oh, that was a good, it was a fun thing. But this year we do some different uh, kickoff. We have uh, a new canvas. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that's, that's pretty clear on the difference between a service blueprint and a customer journey map. 